So these are my three things that I like about living in a van and three things I don't like quite so much about living in the van. Um, if we do the things I like first of all, I would say seeing new places. I'm probably somebody that gets bored quite easily and I know that's a really bad way to be um, but I love to move on and see new things and experience new things um, and it just keeps my mind a bit more entertained than if I'm in a routine. Um, especially struggling with anxiety, distraction is great for me so seeing a new place really really does help. The second thing I like is the people you meet on the road. Um, we've met some wonderful people and we've made some really good friends living in a van and that's something that is invaluable to me um, because social things are very important. And thirdly, I think although routine can be very good, um, for me not having routine and being able to plan our day how we want. So um, if I have to work, I can choose if I want to work in the evening, in the morning, during the day, as long as something isn't urgent. If we want to go out and see something in the day, I can then work in the evening or at the weekends. And in a nine to five job, you just don't get that opportunity. Um, so for that, I'm very, very grateful. So I think they're my my primary three things. There's lots of other things, but the meeting new people, going to new places, and having a choice about how you plan your day. So the things I don't like so much about living in a van, it's quite, there can be a few of these. So I've picked the main ones here. Firstly, I guess the size of the van, it can be very restrictive. Not so bad in nice weather, um, but if it's cold and wet and rainy, it can be quite miserable at times. Um, the second thing is actually in contradiction to one of the first things, the social isolation. Now, whilst you can meet great people on the road and it can be quite social, there are times when you are very much on your own. Um, and even when it's just Nigel and I, you know, as much as we get on really, really well most of the time, it's hard just being the two of you at times. Particularly in Scandinavia last year, we found for three months we were rarely talking with anyone. And that is quite difficult. And finally, I guess logistics and worry over things going wrong. So um, if something will happen, were to happen to the van and you have to get it fixed, if you become ill, particularly if it's something you might need to fly back to your um, local country for. Um, also even things like if you need the toilet or you wanna have a shower, sometimes that can be quite stressful if there's just nothing in the area for you to use. So logistics is a big thing, um, social isolation and just the sheer size of the van and that includes not having an indoor bathroom um, or a fixed bed but you know van size comes with compromise so you can't have everything but they're they're my three main things I would say. So I guess it's my turn now three things I struggle with and three things I really love about traveling in the van apologies for a barky dog hang on gotta go through the ball said ball That'll keep her busy for all of three seconds. Obviously, number one, what I love about traveling in the van, it's an easy one, seeing new places. We've seen some fantastic sights, eaten some wonderful food and met some fantastic people. So, so absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, I mean, it goes without saying, one of the reasons why we travel um, is to see new places. And of course, in the van, being able to sort of stay a little bit longer um, is is great, especially when you find sort of free park ups. You can stay for several days, and um, that's that's great. However, that then leads me on to the struggle side of things. I really do like to stay in places for slightly longer, I would say, than probably Nicola wants to. I think we've mentioned this before that she would get a little bit more anxious, you know, whenever if, if we're just sort of very much downtime, not really doing a lot. Whereas I could probably pull up into a little park up and, you know, spend three or four days just sort of mitching around, do a little bit of photography, a little bit of running, a little bit of eating. Um, so it's a yin and yang. I love to see the new places, but I must admit, I struggle a little bit when we're continuously moving on every couple of days. So another thing I struggle with leading this life, this nomadic life, is my creativity. Now I've spoken about that numerous times before, so I won't go into it in too much detail. When I'm in one place, I really can explore it much more and see the season change. And, and that's been very difficult to do. And so my creativity absolutely has been challenged. 
one of the reasons why I'm doing this 100 day project. Coming to Spain, coming to these countries where it's glorious weather, don't get me wrong, it's, it's fantastic. But of course I am missing out in some wonderful atmospheric wintry conditions back in Scotland and back in Ireland. I certainly do miss just devoting my, my being, my whole sort of life to, to, to photography. It's kind of having to take sort of a, a little piece of, of, my, of my day now. And so I, I struggle a lot with that. In fact, I think that would probably be my, my number one struggle. I do, however, love the freedom that traveling in a van brings you. Now, we weren't able to have a family. And at some point down the line, I'm sure we will own a house again. I've struggled with that concept, the concept of owning a property when we don't have anyone to leave it to. So perhaps we'll be, if we're fortunate enough to make it to our sort of 60s and 70s, maybe with not, not as much kind of spare cash because the money is wrapped up in the house. Whereas actually when we're on the road, our, cost, our costs can be quite low, as long as we stay away from too many cakes. But our costs can be quite low. And that gives us much more freedom to do many, many more things. I mean, some of the things that we were able to do last year um, that obviously we would have... Sorry, I just saw a huge dragonfly go past. That was beautiful. Um, some of the things that we did last year, you know, the whale watching and the bear watching and, you know, various hikes and all made possible because we obviously weren't paying mortgages and we weren't paying sort of home bills and things like that. So I love the the financial freedom and the physical freedom that traveling in the van brings us. The fear of missing out. Now, absolutely, 100%, this is a first world problem. This is my problem. We're traveling in the van right now, and it's, it's brilliant. But I see someone maybe doing the Camino, or when we were traveling in Scotland, maybe someone doing some backpacking, a long distance walking path. Or maybe I see a couple of cyclists, you know, getting on board a ferry with their backpacks. This was especially true last year whenever we were in Norway. And while I want to travel in the van, I then want to do a long distance walking path. I want to go backpacking to Asia. I want to do a bike packing trip with my buddies, looking at you, Alistair. And so I really do struggle a little bit with the fear of missing out. It's almost as if I would love to kind of splice my life up and part of me goes off and does the backpacking, part of me goes off and does the, the long distance walking path, part of me goes off and does um, the bike packing, part of me goes off and trains to run an ultra marathon again, and part of me carries on doing the, the van life. But that is absolutely a first word problem. Dwelled upon too much, but this is just me speaking frankly. I, I do kind of sometimes have that pang when I, when I see those panniers packed on a ferry or people doing the walking paths, but. Perhaps one day I will get to do a couple of other uh, different types of challenges once we've hung, on, hung up our van keys. And my third thing, I love, <laughs> I love spending time with Nicola. Many people say to us, I couldn't do it. I couldn't live in a little tiny box with, with my other half. I'd, I'd have them strung up. And it is challenging. And you certainly have to have a a certain type of relationship, especially in a in a small van. And let's just say we have had our struggles, both externally, speaking about them on the channel, but also between ourselves as well. We absolutely have. But I really do think that traveling in this way, you know, quite often you'll spend your life nine to five or eight to ten or whatever, you know, most of the day in work separate. And then you'll come back home and you'll know, wolf down some food and before you know it, it's bedtime and then next morning you're off back doing the work and so maybe the only quality time you get to spend with your partner is holidays and maybe weekends. If you've got kids, maybe not because you're taking them all off to various clubs and various bits and pieces. So while we have had, let's just say, moments, I have to say they have been few and far between. Now I have no idea what Nicola's been talking about in her three things she's struggling with in love. So maybe she's completely contradicting me, but no, I, I do think that we work well as a team. And I've loved this last year traveling with her. I especially love it when she gets excited about something, when she's done something that's really challenged her. 
And so, yeah, getting to spend quality time on a daily basis with the woman that I love, that's not a bad thing, is it? Just one last thing to struggle with, and again, goes without saying, which is why I didn't kind of really include it in the top three. Missing family. You know, parents are getting older, and it is a, it is heart-wrenching sometimes to, to be leaving them and knowing that you might not see them again for a, another couple of months. Um, my parents are not tech-minded at all. In fact, Nicola's mum isn't either, and so we can't even do that often, that uh, FaceTime calls and things like that. So absolutely, it is a, it is a bit of a challenge um, leaving uh, the family. That being said, of course, we went back last year for three months and that perhaps was a little bit too long because it kind of reset our, our whole mindset. So we are looking at how we can sort of balance that a little bit better this year to be able to go back and see our mums and dads. Right, well, there you go. Three things that we struggle with traveling in the van, this nomadic lifestyle, and three things we love, we really enjoy. And now I'm gonna go in and edit this video and I guess get to hear what Nicola had to say. Hopefully her first thing she struggles with wasn't me. And this was her way of telling me. <laughs> right guys, well, once again, and from the 100 day project day, really not sure. Thanks for following along. And until next time, see you later. Bye-bye.